Hormonal regulation in males. All humans have at least one X chromosome. Lots of very important genes on this chromosome. Women have homologous pair of chromosomes, one from each parent but only one X chromosome is expressed in each cell. The other is a non-functioning bar body. In males, their X chromosome comes from their mothers. They inherit the Y from their dads. The moment of fertilization seals the gender fate of the offspring. Biology 30 doesn't really talk about the genes on the Y chromosome except for the TDF gene. A few weeks following fertilization, the TDF gene is turned on, causing the production of male sex hormones called androgens, of which testosterone is one. This triggers the development of the male's primary sex characteristics at about the seven-week stage of fetal development. After ceasing at birth, androgen release begins again at puberty, causing the development of the secondary sex characteristics, including sperm development. This goes on until he dies. Specifically, a hypothalamic releasing hormone called GnRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release two hormones, FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Both tropic hormones target the testes. LH regulates testosterone production from the interstitial cells and is regulated by a negative feedback mechanism that shuts down hypothalamic and pituitary secretions when testosterone levels become too high. FSH stimulates the Sertoli cells and combined with testosterone regulates sperm production. In response, the Sertoli cells secrete inhibin, a hormone that triggers a negative feedback mechanism. When it increases, hypothalamic and pituitary secretions stop. Artificially increasing testosterone concentrations causes increased development in the secondary sex characteristics, sperm and muscle development, etc., in the short term. In the long term, the negative feedback mechanism will overcompensate and cause testicular shrinkage and lower sperm count, and because there exists a balance between estrogen concentrations and testosterone concentrations, the extra testosterone can also convert to estrogen. Increasing their amounts causing the development of female secondary sex characteristics, including breast development. So GnRH, a hypothalamic releasing hormone, causes the anterior pituitary to release FSH and LH. LH targets the interstitial cells to regulate testosterone production. FSH targets the Sertoli cells and, combined with testosterone, regulates sperm production. Negative feedback systems regulate the release of hormones. An inhibin from the Sertoli cells regulates FSH production when sperm levels get too high. Hormonal regulation in females. They have the same basic hormonal processes as in males. GnRH released at puberty, LH and FSH released in response. Genetically, XX embryos become female due to an as yet unidentified hormone that causes the secretion of estrogen. By week 7 of fetal development, female secondary sex characteristics begin to develop. Like the male, they cease at birth only to start up again during puberty. The hormones are identical to their male counterparts and serve in similar capacities. FSH stimulates follicular development, while LH stimulates progesterone secretion. It seems that FSH controls estrogen secretion. It's worth mentioning that I refer to the sex hormones as estrogen for females and testosterone for males. Realistically, there are several similar acting and similar looking hormones that are collectively known as the estrogens and the androgens, respectively. Ovaries secrete estrogen and progesterone to regulate the secondary sex characteristics, including the menstrual cycle. Like the testes in males, the ovaries are the target of the pituitary tropic hormones. The ovaries release the female hormones estrogen and progesterone, not the same as any of the estrogens, but still a steroid hormone. The hormone patterns and feedback systems look similar in the males and females, but the female has a more coordinated release of hormones that is cyclical and repeats on average every 28 days and is called the menstrual cycle. 
The McGraw Hill text splits this cycle into two the ovarian cycle, which has two divisions, and the uterine cycle. I'm going to define the menstrual cycle as having the more traditional four phases menstrual or flow phase, the follicular phase, the ovulatory phase, and the luteal phase. The menstrual phase is the only phase that can be determined externally. Day 1 is marked by the shedding of the endometrium, bleeding. Estrogen and progesterone levels are at their lowest, thereby causing the endometrium to become unstable and the uterus to contract in order to expel it. FSH and LH levels are starting to rise as part of the negative feedback system. Low estrogen progesterone means more FSH LH produced. After on day 5, the FSH production has caused one or more of the follicles to develop in the ovaries which in turn produce estrogen and a small amount of progesterone. During this phase, a positive feedback system elevates estrogen levels by causing the pituitary to increase FSH levels. This promotes the stabilization of the uterus and another endometrium begins to develop. At around day 14, the mature follicle bursts from the ovary in response to increased LH levels that spiked in response to high estrogen levels. Progesterone levels are now high, promoting a faster development of the endometrium in preparation for the implantation of a fertilized ovum. The fourth phase is called the luteal phase. The cells remaining following ovulation change into glandular material that secretes estrogen and progesterone independently of FSH and LH from the pituitary. This causes the level of these hormones to remain high. Yet the negative feedback system drop the levels of GnRH and FSH and LH tropic hormones. If implantation is not detected, the corpus luteum degrades into scar tissue and stops producing estrogen and progesterone. The drop in hormones causes the uterus to become unable to support the endometrium and it contracts, shedding the endometrium beginning day one of the next cycle. The lack of estrogen and progesterone stimulate FSH and LH secretions. As the number of follicles decrease during a woman's reproductive years, her levels of estrogen decrease until she's unable to produce enough to cause ovulation. Ultimately, she becomes infertile, and this marks menopause. So the luteal phase is when the corpus luteum secretes estrogen and progesterone. The remaining cells following ovulation change into glandular material, and this produces hormones. LH and FSH concentrations diminish, and after about two weeks, the corpus luteum degenerates into scar tissue called the corpus albicans, if implantation does not occur by then. The lack of sex hormones causes the endometrium to shed, marking day one of the next cycle. These are the key terms for this chapter.